आई एम डॉक्टर के वी आर्य फ्रॉम अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी ट्रिपल आई टी एम ग्वालियर वर्किंग देयर एज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर माई प्राइमरी रिसर्च एरिया इज इमेज प्रोसेसिंग बायोमेट्रिक्स एंड रिसेंटली आई हैव स्टार्टेड वर्किंग इन मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क प्राइमरीली आई कंसल्टेंट ऑन टू इशूज इन द मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क द पावर अवेयर राउटिंग एंड द सिक्योर राउटिंग बट इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू गिव द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क अलॉन्ग विद सम जनरल टर्म्स यूज फॉर दैट पर्पज सो मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क दिस इज फॉर्म्ड बाई द वायरलेस होर्स विच मे बी मोबाइल विदाउट नेसेसरली यूजिंग ए प्री एग्जिस्टिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तो वी डोंट नीड एनी प्री एग्जिस्टिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क एंड द रूट्स बिटवीन द नोट्स मे बी पोटेंशियली कंटेनिंग द मल्टीपल हॉर्स सो इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल दैट द एवरी सोर्स एंड डेस्टिनेशन विल बी कनेक्टेड ऑन द डायरेक्ट लिंक देर मे बी वी नीड टू गो फॉर द मल्टीपल हॉर्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ द नोट्स in between the source and destination so the mobile ad hoc networks they may need to traverse the multiple links to reach the destination like in this example we can see suppose a is my uh, source which want to send some information to my destination uh, b so there are multiple links are there like a may go to d and d to c and then ultimately will be reaching to b or there is the another path available it may go to c and then will be going to b so similarly depending on that how many uh, nodes are there in the communication range of my source node a number of nodes this paths will be available so depending on my uh, criteria of path search it will be selecting any of the path from the available nodes in mobile ad hoc networks the mobility causes the route change because as we know that every node is mobile in this network so the node which was the part of my route may move out of the network so ultimately when it moves out of the network it will be disrupting the path from um, source to destination so in that case we should have the mechanism for finding the uh, another route so that the source can send the required information to the destination so uh, like we can see in this case suppose the uh, d has move out of the network so we have to find out the another path so why ad hoc networks the question arises why at all we should go for the ad hoc networks because our wired network was doing well so the simple reason is that this is ease of deployment because deployment of the wired uh, ad hoc network is simple because the devices are mobile i don't need any wired network i don't need any fixed infrastructure so another thing is speed of deployment because fixed infrastructure is not there wires need not to be Uh, 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 put into there we need not to dig any wires into the earth or so so we uh, fastly we can deploy the network and the third one is decrease dependence on the infrastructure so i do not uh, have much dependency on the infrastructure that is why the ad hoc networks are being preferred over the wired network or over the fixed infrastructure networks as far as the applications of wireless ad hoc networks are concerned the first one is the military environment in fact it is started from the military applications only the quick communication among the group of soldiers in the enemy territories or in hospitable terrains where um, the terrain are like this that i it's not possible for us to put the wired connection over there or to put any fixed infrastructure over there so they are the wireless ad hoc networks are the only solution in those cases then the coordination of the military objects moving at high speed such as the fleet of airplanes or the warships prime concern for the military environment and for reliability efficiency security support for the multicast routing so these are the applications as far as the civilian environment is concerned there also the ad hoc networks are being used extensively like the mesh networks taxi cab network meeting rooms sports stadium boats small air carts etc so these are the civil applications where wireless ad hoc networks are being used effectively another application could be the personal area network where the, like using our laptops earphones wrist watches etc so they could also be uh, um, used as a part of wireless ad hoc network so because there also we don't need any fixed infrastructure so without wild, uh, uh, fixed infrastructure with a wireless medium we can talk to each other another application could be the emergency operations like in environments where the conventional infrastructure based communication facilities are destroyed due to the war or due to some natural calamities so in those case we need to provide the communication so wireless ad hoc network is a very effective medium of providing the communication 
in real time communication may be the prime concern so here in emergency cases real time communication is a important factor so we need to look into this while designing such wireless ad hoc networks in the emergency cases wireless sensor networks is the one step ahead of it where the devices use there are the sensor which will be sensing some parameters maybe like the uh, humidity is maybe the like temperature and this could be used for finding um, uh, like in the uh, jungle we can identify the um, um, fire etc because if the temperature of the particular sensor is observed much higher than the threshold so we can say there is a possibility of fire in the jungle so sensor networks are used for that purpose the measurement of the parameter uh, uh, like the humidity also we can measure and we can find out because the humidity is increasing is there any leakage of water or something there so we can look it is very very useful particularly for those applications of the industry where the leakage could be hazardous for the uh, uh, human being so there we replace the human operators human observers by the sensor uh, devices and these devices will be sensing those parameters like the concentration of the nuclear Uh, 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 waves over there, the concentration of the chemical in the atmosphere. So, if those concentration is observed to be higher than some uh, threshold value, so then we, we can say that there is a possibility of leakage of the chemicals or leakage of nuclear radiations. Another application could be the collaborative and distributed computing, where the quick communication among the group of people need to be provided. Group of researchers want to share their research findings. so if you suppose many researchers are working on the same problem and everybody is doing the different different sub problem of this and they need to uh, share their finding because that the finding of the one researcher could be useful for the uh, work of the second researcher so we need to provide a communication over medium so there this wireless medium could be a very very useful device distributing the lecture notes on the data uh, uh, on the class like uh, uh, i am teaching some class i want to distribute the my notes to the entire class or every member of the class so in that cases we can uh, use the wireless network for distributing these notes devices with the high processing power like laptops and pdas are required for that purpose but the issue comes over there is interoperability in an important issue because the pda have different structure the laptops have the different configuration so how these different configuration devices will be communicating to each other to make the entire system so that is an issue so we need to look into that issue while designing another important uh, application is the vehicular ad hoc networks they are used for the intelligent transportation system safety applications traffic control applications and the comfort applications so here the vehicles itself will be acting like a device another application is the wireless mesh networks used in the residential zones or the broadband internet connectivity on highway for providing the communication facility for moving automobiles some business zones university campuses and the civilian areas so there we use the wireless mesh networks where we use uh, the mesh connectivity among the wireless devices so there are many variations of the wireless ad hoc networks they, they they could be categorized based on the fully symmetric environment like all nodes have the identical capabilities and responsibilities all the devices have the similar configuration there could be asymmetric capabilities transmission ranges may differ that all the devices have the different different transmission range battery life may be different for the different nodes processing capability may be different for the different nodes and the speed of movement may be differ like in the symmetric environment everybody has the similar device similar capability also the speed of movement will also be same but in asymmetric everything could be different everybody have its own capability which is which um, net, not necessarily will be matching with the other devices asymmetric responsibilities only some nodes uh, may route the packets some nodes may act as a leader or uh, uh, nearby nodes like uh, if you use the cluster uh, routing or something so the we need to have a cluster head so which will have the more information then uh, the uh, other because it will need to perform additional tasks as compared to the other nodes in that system the mobility patterns may be different that the people sitting in an airport lounge new york taxi cabs kids playing military movements and the personal area networks they are the uh, examples over there the mobility characteristics speed predictability direction of the movement pattern of the movement 
uniformity or the lack thereof, the mobility of characteristics among the different nodes. But the challenges here are broadcast nature of the wireless medium and there comes a problem of the hidden terminal problem which we will discuss in the next slide, mobility um, induced root changes, mobility induced packet losses, battery constraints because each of the mobile devices has their limited battery. So, we uh, cannot afford that any of the node should drain out its battery. So, battery constraint is a big issue over here. Potentially frequent network uh, partitions, ease of snooping or wireless transmission, security hazards, etc. Hidden terminal problem is like that, like A wants to send to C, but C cannot hear to A or to the other nodes. The transmission nodes may A to C collide with the B because B can hear to C as well as to A. So, nodes A and C are hidden from each other, but they can talk to each other with the help of the node B. So, that is the hidden problem, hidden node problem. Design issues in the mobile mm, wireless ad hoc networks, one is the routing and the challenges in the routing protocol are the frequent path breaks due to the mobility, packet drops due to the mobility again, stay, uh, that uh, uh, the still of the routing information, difficulty in resource reservation, bandwidth constraints, battery power, buffer storage and the computing power. So, these all are the issues which need to be taken care while designing a routing protocol. Requirement for routing protocol, minimum root acquisition delay, quick root reconfiguration, loop free routing, distributed routing, minimum control overhead, scalability, provision for quality of services and support for the time of sensitive traffic security. So, with this we can see that the wireless ad hoc network which is very very useful for the real life application nowadays, it has the different challenges as well as the deployment of the network there and the biggest challenge is the routing when we are looking for our battery life and looking for the security of this. Thank you.